Welcome to this Latin American Perspectives podcast. I'm Danielle Bath, Editorial Assistant at Sage Publications. Today I'm speaking with Armando Alvarez, Outreach Coordinator at Latin American Perspectives, and Jadat Abu El Haj, Professor of Political Science and Sociology at University of Syrah. He recently published a research article in the newest issue of Latin American Perspectives entitled Latin American Perspectives, a Progressive Collective Intellectual and Its Social Knowledge. Hello, Jadot. Thank you for joining us from Fortaleza, Brazil. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Jadot was named the third Latin American Perspectives Fellow and was in residence at the Rivera Library at the University of California, Riverside, from January to March 2012. His project was a study of the founding and evolution of Latin American perspectives from the early 1970s until the present. Now, this issue is very important because it marks 40 years of Latin American perspectives. And in addition to that, Jadat, your article represents a highlight of those 40 years. I have a couple of questions regarding the article that you published. I'm sure some of our listeners are interested in finding out how Latin American perspectives came to be. So what were the factors that contributed to the creation of LAP? Well, we can trace LAP to a critical movement by young Latin Americanists that criticized the LASA mainstream organization in the 1968 and 70 meetings in Washington, D.C. and New York. And then later on, they founded the URLA, Union of Radical Latin Americanists, a movement that brought together a progressive East and West Coast critics of LASA and the Latin American Research Review, the mainstream journal. Well, the new generation considered itself to be an alternative to two kinds of intellectuals that uh, dominated the profession then, the traditional intellectual and advisor to the elites. The first group uh, in the Gramscian sense is the Mannheimian type of an academician that considered himself or herself to be independent and even above society and social forces. They considered themselves to be distant observers, limited to scientific issues, uh, and had no contact with society and its uh, general polemics and uh, social struggles. The advisor to the elites was a new uh, brand of intellectuals that emerged during the Cold War, and they were worried about economic, political, and cultural stability. And they considered communism, and specifically in Latin America, Cuba, to be a main threat to the region and to U.S. interests. Basically, they supported the military regimes. Well, the new generation uh, that represented the URLA and then later on converged to establish LAP as a main uh, publication vehicle. They believed that intellectuals were not and should not be distant from society and that they needed to be critical of inequalities in the U.S. and in the rest of the globe. They challenged the dogma that there were no social problems in the U.S., no class struggle, no social conflicts in Latin America. They integrated uh, other movements in social sciences areas, in economics, such as the radical political economists, in political science, new political science, in sociology, the sociology liberation movement, even in England, the new left review. And so I believe that LAP is the camp that all these progressive intellectuals converged and they exteriorized their uh, concerns and their publications. You also had the opportunity to speak to many founding members of LAP. So what did you learn about the journal with the help of founding members, Jadet? I spent two months in Riverside at UCR Rivera Library. I had extensive interviews with Ron Chilcote. I also had a long interview with Tim Harding. Donald and Marjorie Bray had interviewed all the founders, and I had access to their interviews. The LAP archives in the Rivera Library were well-organized, meticulous, and had every imaginable manuscript that was published or even rejected with the reviews. So I had a good idea and notion about how LAP became an important journal, and I would say not only an academic periodical, but even an intellectual camp in itself. Let me just mention three issues which basically lead to LAP. The first was the critique that the mainstream excluded polemic themes of social inequalities, uh, class conflict, imperialism, dependence, etc., from its agenda of research. Secondly, the sidelining of Latin American intellectuals from LAR, Latin American Research Review. They were deemed unfit to the high standards of the American Academy. 
Most were engaged in political struggles in Latin America during authoritarian regimes, and therefore they published and wrote a lot about their political activism, and they related theory to political practice. For the mainstream, such convergence between theory and political practice was something unacceptable. The third issue that LAP would champion was the Cuban experience, and they considered Cuba maybe to be even an inspiration for other people in Latin America to be able to break with the past and develop socially the poor and the marginalized population. So I would say that LAP was founded on these three issues, facing polemic discussions on social conflicts, specifically in capitalist societies, secondly, including Latin American authors, and thirdly, considering socialism as a viable alternative to other societies in Latin America. You also spent much time at the UCR library, like you mentioned, in special collections, and you were able to review a lot of the LEP content since its inception. Tell me, how has the Latin American Perspectives Journal progressed as an academic journal? LAP is well-tuned with what is happening in Latin America and in the U.S. Academy, and you can see that through the changes in the themes uh, that basically were debated and, and treated within the journal during four decades. I suggested the existence of eight themes. Specifically, they were not indicated by the journal, but my research led me to pinpoint these eight issues as driving themes of the journal, dependency, Cuba, gender, class struggle and social change, uh, vanguardism and democratic class struggle, neoliberal globalization, civil society and social movements, and the eighth, the new left wave in Venezuela, Bolivia, Brazil, Ecuador, and Uruguay. Let me emphasize that LAP is an important journal because of several factors. It developed a new notion of social knowledge, and that's very important. It tends to be a public and engaged in social struggles and political alternatives to capitalism. It's progressive because it needs to command theories and debate theories. It critiques the incoherencies of the mainstream. It analyzes concrete social forces and debated the direction of uh, Latin American societies. It continues to be a self-renovating journal. It does not stagnate or does not uh, become involved with only one theme or one issue. That's because it became an open journal to intellectuals from different fields, from different ideologies, from different political beliefs. I believe that the founding editors, and specifically Ronald Chilcot, that's why I did the biography of the founding editors, were important in building this intellectual camp. Although the left tends towards closure frequently of theories and ideologies, as we have seen in the old Soviet Union, LAP as a left journal was an open forum for the progressive forces and progressive intellectuals. That is an important issue that made LAP a leading pioneering journal that today is even emulated by a Latin American Research Review that is trying to include Latin American authors and themes within its publications. LAP is as an important progressive intellectual camp. That's what I documented in my research. Well, thank you for your time, Jadad. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Armando and Jadad, for sharing your research with us. The paper, Latin American Perspectives, a Progressive Collective Intellectual and its Social Knowledge, is published in the November 2013 issue of Latin American Perspectives and can be found online at lap.sagepub.com and latinamericanperspectives.com. Also check out facebook.com slash lapjournal for further information on Latin American Perspectives. Mm -hmm.